And it's time to have church. Time to have some church. And so they did. Ezra, you might say the preacher, he got out the word. And he began to read the word to them. I, lo I love, look at, look at, if you would, let me just scan this real quickly. Look in verse 3. The Bible said that he read uh, from morning until midday. And the people listened and were attentive to the book of the law. The Bible tells us about how they built him a, pul a pulpit and... Uh, and uh, he, he, he stood up above the people. The people stood. And they listened to the word of God as Ezra read from the book of the law. Look up here. From morning until midday. We can't make it till 12 noon without a fuss. Friend, I've I've preached over 9,000 times since I've been a preacher. I've seen snarls. I've seen folk jiggle their keys. I'm talking, when you get near that 12 o'clock mark, it's like folk get the hinky TVs for something and, and folk get restless and they start staring at you in weird ways and they start bug-eyeing at you and they, and, and they give you a little hints and, and you know, they, they put their watch up here to... I'll never forget Dr. Tim Lee was preaching one time or a Marine gave two of his legs in Vietnam and, and he was preaching and there was a guy sitting in there about the second or third row and, and he kept doing this number to Dr. Lee, you know, to throwing his hand in there like, you know, <coughs> and Dr. Lee just talked what he was saying. He said, shut up! Every time you look at your watch, I'm going to add another 15 minutes to the message. <laughs> Let me tell you, don't mess with those Marines. <laughs> we can't sit through an hour service. And here they stood attentively from nine until noon. From nine a.m. till noon, three hours went by. And they're standing attentively and listening to Ezra read the word of God. He's not even preaching. He's just reading from the book of the law. And you don't think we need revival. You don't think we need revival. We can't sit through an hour or so without getting fidgety and we think about I was preaching here back a few years ago and a, a lady over here got up and left out of the service about, oh, I don't know, it was about uh, quarter to eight, something like that, seven o'clock start. And, and I, I thought, you know, some emergency. So, and, and there are people that leave out when I'm preaching. They don't bother me one bit. I just get right on rolling. But afterwards, I asked the pastor. I said, was there a problem? Was there an emergency? Was there, and, and the lady that was sitting beside uh, her friend, uh, she told the pastor. She said, no, 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 no. That, no emergency. He said, uh, American Idol comes on at 8 o'clock. <laughs> So she had to slip out. But we don't need revival. No, we don't need revival. But American Isle is more important than what's going on for eternity's sake. For three hours they stood and listened to the word of God as his were read the law. And the Bible said, kind of indicates that Ezra kind of got happy. The Bible said and he, uh, in, in verse 6, Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. In other words, Ezra got happy. Ezra couldn't take it any longer. They haven't had this. And Ezra reading the word, and it so moved him. The Bible said he, he blessed the word. Blessed means also happy. It just made Ezra it, he filled up with joy and he just had a little time out and had a swollen spell. Excuse me, y'all. Woohoo! <laughs> just from reading the law. We shouldn't mind it if a preacher gets happy on occasion. I mean, Easter and Christmas, we have a right, don't we? To get happy. They had a spell. And then the Bible goes on to say in this verse, in this, this 
just going to eat some of you plumb up, but it's the Bible, so I don't care if you have a fit or not. The Bible said all the people said amen. amen. All the people. You know what that little word all means in the original Hebrew? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. They all said amen. amen. And it must have really felt good to them because the Bible they said it again a second time. Amen. 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 <laughs> I don't know why we make that a hard thing. I mean, we're God's people. We're in God's house. But how in the world did we get so sophisticated in uptown that we can't come to church and, and shout a little re and, and, and rejoice a little over the good blessings of God? I look around here tonight. Most of you done ate two or three times today. You're going to go and, and lay down in the bed with the roof over your head. You drove to church. You didn't have to ride a bicycle or you didn't have to walk. Some of you got kids that are not in jail tonight. <laughs> The Bible says when we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I don't know. Unless y'all got me fooled, you don't look like city folk to me. You look like just regular country folk. If we're just regular country folk, saved by the grace of God, how do we get so high and mighty and uptown to proper, you know, <laughs> Let me tell you what I've discovered in traveling a little bit through the years. We've grown way too quiet. Used to go to about any Baptist church within 50 miles. And they'd shout, have church, and every once in a while somebody get real happy, they'd, they'd, they'd run a little spell. We'd have testimony time. Testimonies would break out. Somebody would stand and say, Preacher, can I just share how good God's been to me today? God bless me. God answered prayer for me. I just want to give God praise. Somebody else will pop up a little bit and say, I just want to thank the Lord. He's been so good to me. I want to thank God for saving my soul. Somebody else would stand up and give a little testimony. And we didn't think anything was wrong with that. Now, God forbid that we break out into a testimony meeting. And, you know, we, uh, <clears throat> we uh, stay on schedule, you know. <laughs> the preacher got happy. People said, Amen. Yeah. Twice! <laughs> it's not a hard word. It's not like the yeah, little word I learned when I was a kid, super evangelistic extra me out of those things. It's not a hard word. It ain't got ten syllables. It's only got two. Amen. You say, well, I just can't do that, preacher. I just can't do that. Excuse me? It's not that you can't. You just determine that you won't. Amen. It's not that you can't. Let me prove it to you. What did we say with the righteous and which was the wicked? Let's start with the righteous. The righteous. Come on, y'all be the righteous. Y'all say A, and the, the wicked will say Amen. All right, here we go. A. Amen. That's some that didn't participate, Pastor. And they don't know it. They don't know it. But we're going to be here another hour until they participate. Well, I'll give you another chance. Here we go. Hey! It's not, it's, not, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's not that we can't. It's not that we can't. Some of you get more excited down at a little little league game that you do at the house of God. You go to a football game on Friday night and your team scores and you're over there. Woo! You got into church. It's like you in a straight jacket. Well, praise God. I mean, I mean come on. I, I've, I've seen grandparents, they, they, they go down to the, the, the little grandson, you know, hit a little tee ball, hit a tee ball 20 feet. Woo! That's my boy over there, that's my boy. They ain't got no tee ball. I ain't got boy. Hey, that's my boy. He ain't got ball, that glory. 
come to church. Oh. <laughs> Amen. It, it's an easy word. Glory. It's an easy word. Praise God. It's simple. Look, this is God's house. We're God's people. Well, I think the righteous over here, the wicked's over here. The more I think about it, I think the righteous over here, the wicked's over here. Look. It's, look. This is God's house. Let me finish now. Let me finish now. Don't give me no lip. Let me finish. We, this is God's house. We're God's people. Ain't nobody here tonight but us and the Lord. If God's been good to us, why can we not release our joy? Just a simple amen. I promise you what we just did. Amen. Let's try it again. I'm going really mess you up. Let's say A over here, men over here. Are you ready? A. I guarantee if this pastor got to pulpit Sunday, he owned the word of God to these specific folks. Let's open our Bible this morning to John chapter 3. Amen. They'd have to call 911. The pastor would fall out of the floor. Somebody got to call a refuse wife. They'd say we done killed the preacher. What did we do? I don't know. A bunch of folks said amen. And he fell out. How about that for a tombstone? Here lies John Smith. People shouted, he fell out. It, Look, it's just a matter of obedience. That's all it is. And here's Nehemiah. Think about this. The people listen to the word of God. And they're moved in their heart. Ezra gets happy. They shout amen. They lifted their hands. I, don't, I, I can't halfway preach that. Some of you give me the poochie mouth just for saying it. <laughs> Look at their hands. That's a charismatic. We're not charismatic over here. It's not charismatic. It's not Baptist. It's not Presbyterian. It's just Bible. Oh, it is. That's right. They lift their hands. They bow their faces to the ground. I suppose we couldn't go there. We do good just to sit for an hour. It's <laughs> us bowing. You know, we're bowing. We're doing no bowing. You know, I've been to the Middle East. What struck me, Pastor, was over there on the Temple Mount. They go in that dome of the rock, they call it. They take the shoes off before they go. You are not permitted inside of that structure until you remove your shoes. And you go in there and you watch those people and that five times a day on the park. They bow. Faces to the ground. And it's a false religion! Don't let the media fool you, folks. Allah is not Jehovah. No, sir. Not to see. There they are with their faces to the ground. Here we are Christians. We're doing good to go to a four-night revival. And shout a little bit. Perish the call. Lift hands. Oh, God, no. That's not the way we do things. So Nehemiah says, hey, this is not the day of hell. This is not the day of mourn. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Some of you didn't think I was going to make it back to the text, did you? But here we go. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's not time to mourn. This is not time to mourn. The joy of the Lord is your strength. If we could ever get a hold of that. What do you think the average sinner thinks when he goes into a church? And it feels like a morgue instead of a church service. Here's a man of God up here talking about a real heaven and a real Savior. And 
we're asleep. <laughs> Let me throw this in and I'm through. <coughs> you say, well, I, okay, all right, preacher, it's in the Bible, but it's Old Testament. You know, yeah, there's a verse over there in Hebrews. It says, let us offer the sacrifice of praise continually with our lips. So you wonder, well, okay, it's the Old Testament. It's a little extreme. I mean, it's in 2014. I have burdens. You just don't understand my problems. You want to come to church and shout and praise God and have a good day. Well, you just don't understand what we're up against these days. You must live in a fantasy world. No. I just know God is worthy. And he was worthy last night. And he was worthy last Sunday. And he'll be worthy next Sunday when you come to church. That has everything to do with your circumstances. It has everything to do with a good God. Who's worthy to be praised. Shame on us. I used to say, why? Why the extreme? Why lifting hands? Why bowing with their faces to the ground? Let me, let me share this and I'm through. They hadn't had the opportunity for 70 long years. Come on now. They've been in captivity for 70 long years. They finally get an opportunity to go back and rebuild the city and rebuild their homes and rebuild their lives. And they get a chance to have a little church. And as a reach from the Lord of God, that people can't restrain themselves with. Amen! Which just simply means so be it. Yes, that's right. They say amen. They can't re refrain. They just hold their head. Praise God! And they're so moved, they bow with their faces to the ground in humility and thanksgiving. If, look, look at me. If, look. I don't know what spiritual condition you're in tonight, but if you could not go to church for six months, what if the doors were chained shut? No Sunday school, no special singing, no preaching, no Sunday night service, no nothing. Six months. You can't come together. You can't assemble. You can't have a service. You can't have a preacher. I don't, I don't know about you, but six months, six months? Well, most of us, most of us would be heart sick. Most of us would say, I miss my little Sunday school class. I, I miss my little preacher. I miss coming to church and the fellowship and Oh, God, give us back our church. See, we can't even imagine six months. Imagine 70 years. Look here. Look here. Some years of I think is probably 15 years or so. Over there in Yakin County, we had a major ice storm, major storm. And, and uh, we, we didn't have power. We didn't have electricity for, uh, I think it was five days. Six days, five days. And in our house, we had two daughters at the time. And, and so we had three females in our house. And you know, the first night or two, it's cool. I mean, hey, there's light candles. We need to act like we're camping out. We need to cook some beanie weenies. Sleep in the sleeping bag. Hey, this is cool. But when the power ain't on, you can't fuss the commode. <laughs> It's from all the girls, they're about junior age or so at the time. They go, but daddy, it's like day three, it ain't fun no more. <laughs> day three, I mean, it's freezing. Day three, nothing's working, toilet won't flush. They come and, daddy, we got to go. I said, well, you see the woods out yonder, don't you girls? <laughs> Help yourself. They looked at me with a, <laughs> like go to the woods. Some of y'all laugh because you, you, you remember days when, when you'd have been thankful for the woods. 
and a tree. I'll never forget, I'll never forget that, that Duke Power, electricity, power truck, come down the driveway. I, I remember hearing that beep, beep noise and seeing them guys going up there in that bucket. And I was, I mean, seriously, I was like, I don't care if you triple the, I don't care if you quadruple the bill. I don't care if you triple the bill. Just turn it back on. <laughs> wow. Because we had to have five days. Just to give you an indication of kind of how bikes live, we are. We take church for granted. We just assume it's going to be here tomorrow night, we'll be here the night after that. Friend, we're losing freedoms in America every day. There are pastors in America in jail tonight just for preaching the gospel. You look at me like I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm telling you the truth. We're losing freedoms every week that goes by, every month that goes by. It's not an absurd thing to think that we could get to a point in this country where churches would be closed. What are you going to do? Well, let, let me suggest that you take advantage of what you have tonight. Let me suggest that you just start with what you got tonight. And you thank God for it. And you come to church and you show just a little bit of enthusiasm. Let me suggest that you come and you show just a little enthusiasm for the things of God. I don't care if you shout at the ball game. I don't care if you have a good strawberry crop. You go to the fair and they give you blue ribbon. Go ahead, shout! But don't tell me! That I can't enjoy the presence of Jehovah God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, soon coming back. Amen. 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 Why don't we just ask God to forgive us for taking for granted church? Fellowship, a good gospel song, a little choir, the man of God that gives us the Bible, keeps me on the path that I need to go. Maybe if we tried just a little harder, put forth just a little extra effort, our services may not be near as dry, near as dead. You know what kind of gets me sometimes? I'll hear people, and I've, I've heard it, people stand out in the yard and talk about, boy, I'm telling you right now, white service was awful dry today. <laughs> and his buddy will say, yeah, I don't know, the preacher, he just never did get in gear or something. I don't know. I've heard it with my own ears. And, and, I, and I have so bad. Now, I wouldn't because, you know, I'm saved and sanctified. But I, I wanted to so bad. I wanted to go by one of those rascals to say, Excuse me, sir, man, what did you do to hell? <laughs> I never heard you shout. I never heard you pray to God. I never saw you get excited about the Lord. Shut up! <laughs> Paul wrote, Philippians, rejoice in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice. Had to say it two times because he's hard-headed. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord. See, there it is. It's not about your circumstances. It's not about the economy. It's not about whether it's all going. Look, it's about in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Lord. I can do that tonight. I can do it tomorrow night. I can get happy tonight when I get home. I can rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is always good. Are you going to play an invitation track 
Is that what we're going to do tonight? Okay, you cue that up and have that ready. I'm, I'm just saying that so y'all think I'm about ready to quit. <laughs> See, if I say that, y'all will assume I'm, I'm, I'm about ready to quit. And I am. And I am. But look here. Uh, we were in the service over in Bristol, Virginia a few years back. And the service started out kind of dead, you know. Everybody just kind of sat around. A lady got up and started singing beautifully. I mean, it was, it was precious. And y'all know the song, I'm sure you do, Beulah Land, written by Squire Parsons. And everybody just kind of sitting there, you know, enduring the thing. All of a sudden, there was a little lady on the second row, and her hair up in a, in a bun, and, and weighed maybe 80 pounds soaking wet. And all of a sudden, while wow, they were singing that second verse, it just hit her. The Beulah Land, that's where, that's where she was headed. And she just got happy. And she just started squalling. And, and then little old lady, she's sitting there with her little bony head. She just went, ah! 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 I'm sitting down here on this end of the pew. About the fifth time she did that, I nudged my wife and I said, Honey, if she don't stop that, I'm going to have to take a lap around this church. <laughs> Section, people got the shot over there, the third section, and people was going, Woo! All started with one little lady, one little woman that got happy and decided to release her joy. And the Bible said, The joy of the Lord is our strength. And if we'd ever get back to it, we just might draw somebody. Think about it. Would you stand with me as we bow our heads for a moment tonight of reflection? I don't, I don't know where you are tonight spiritually. I, I, don't, I don't know where you are in your, in your walk with God. I, I just know sometimes as a church we kind of get caught up in the mundane and the routine of things. and We kind of get quiet and we just kind of take it all for granted. Maybe tonight the Lord has stirred up, up your heart, your spirit man, and you realize tonight, you know what? It's not that I can't. It's just that for some reason, I haven't been. And by God's grace, I don't ever want to take this for granted.